Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is SKTV coming to you live from Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Seku Kenne. Uh, my colleague uh, Steve Bolle will be joining me uh, shortly. Oh, yes, uh, I want to welcome you once again to SKTV uh, coming to you live from Phoenix, Arizona. As always, uh, if you're watching us from uh, uh, Liberia, we want to say good evening. And if you are watching us from uh, anywhere where it's in the morning, whether it's Australia, China, South Korea, anywhere where it's in the morning, we want to say good morning. And if you are in the United States, in the East Coast, we want to say good afternoon. And of course, uh, from here in Phoenix, Arizona, and the West Coast of Arizona, it is in the morning. It is 11.24. Uh, we normally start at 11 o'clock, but today we are starting a little bit late. But as the saying goes, um, it's better late than never. We want to encourage you to share the show. Uh, this is very important. Today, we are going to be discussing uh, tribalism in Liberia. It's the effects of tribalism in Liberia and what it has done to our country. And if we don't exist, uh, our nation could have more problem, you know, and we will remain to be stored in one place. We may not go anywhere. But yes, indeed, I want to say thank you to all of you for following. I want to encourage you to share the show. Share the show. Share the show. Share the show. It's very, very important. So we will play this uh, song here by Zach and Jiba, and then we will begin the conversation. But this is very, very important. There are a lot of young people that are involved in our politics nowadays the, not only that they do not understand uh, history, not only that they do not understand the, the impact of tribalism on our country, and some of them they don't read. Because if you were not old enough, if you read the TRC report and recommendation, tribalism is one of those things that are clearly spelled out as some of the major contributing factors that led to the 14 year civil war that took the life over 250,000 human beings, close to 300,000 human uh, I mean, Liberians. So tribalism is dangerous, it's bad, so we'll dig deeper, we'll talk to we'll talk to you about what tribalism has done to Liberia and where we are right now. And if we continue on this path, we might not you know go back to normalcy. Liberia will continue to be dragged and dragged and dragged. At the end of the day, we'll go nowhere. So it's important you share the show. So we can start this very, very, very important conversation. Um, don't forget to, as always, we have uh, the cash app number is there. It's also a Zell number. The contribution we are making for to buy equipment for reporters in Liberia. Um, most of you did uh, some contribution yesterday, which we really appreciate. But don't forget to continue to uh, do your contribution. So yeah, yes, indeed, tribalism is the major, is one of the major factors to our many problems in Liberia. We want to encourage you to share the show. We're going to be opening the line too, so you can chip in to tell us exactly what you know and what you have witnessed in your lifetime, what tribalism has done to Liberia. Well, yes, indeed, I want to encourage you to share the show. It's very, very, very important. Um, those of you who just got here that have not shared the show yet, please go ahead and do so. But we'll be here. We'll have this conversation. We'll discuss today's politic. And tribalism in our politics as well. What is even concerning to me, for the most part, some of those who traffic and perpetuate 
tribalism and playing trouble card or using trouble slurs are people who claim to be educated, claim to be old enough, but have learned nothing. Their education have taught them nothing. Their old age, they have learned nothing. So we're going to talk about tribalism and the effect of tribalism, the level of hate in our country, and the involvement of young people in politics without knowing what they are doing. And the lack of leadership on the part of our politicians that ought to be, you know, teaching their followers how policy is supposed to be played. So share the show. Share the show. We are going to dig deeper. We're going to talk about this. Somebody mentioned Fangon. This is your way beyond Fangon. Fangon is one of the Trouble bigot. But this is beyond Fango. This has to do something with not only tribes. It has something to do with this whole Congo and native divide. It has something to do with how people are elected for political office. How people vote in Liberia. So we have a whole lot to cover. And if we, don't, if we will not be careful, if we are not careful, like Liberians, we could go back to what none of us want, want to go back to. Because if the major players are not playing their role, and as a matter of fact, if the major players are also a part of tribalism, discrimination, then we have a long way to go. So I want to encourage every one of you to share the show. We'll play Zach and Jiba for a minute, a few minutes while we share the show. And then we'll come back to start the conversation. Steve will be joining us uh, uh, in a little bit, but please go ahead and share the show. Let's celebrate and have a peaceful home. 
the one and only home that we have. stop there for now and jump right there on the show so i want to say thank you to each and every one of you that have shared the show and i want to encourage everybody to please go ahead and share the show so we can have this very very important conversation first of all let's look at the the country we have Let's look at our constitution. Liberia as a nation, per our constitution, we are a circular nation. Circular nation where it means that a country that the law, the laws are not based on trap. A country where does not 
run her country based on travel uh, basis. And there's no travel dominance. There's no, you know, basic, there's no one religion or religion dominance. As a matter of our country, our constitution clearly spell out that separation of state and religion. It means that we are a secular nation. People can practice whatever religion they want to practice or decide to practice no religion. People have the right to associate or disassociate. But it is unfortunate that those who are considered educated ones, um, for the most part, the ones that can be perpetrating tribalism, discrimination, and they are the ones that have been destroying our country. Back in the days when the True Whip Party was in power for so many years, their belief was Liberian people, the native Liberians, the indigenous Liberians were not that educated. They were not, they, 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 had, they had no knowledge of governance. So people were overlooked. They felt that we, we lacked the capacity to run a government that we don't understand a system of governance. So they dominated the country in terms of politics for so many years. Many, many, many of native Liberians, indigenous Liberians, for them to be accepted, for them to be incorporated into the society, to form part of the governance system, to fill in. Most of them have to change their name. Somebody, for example, somebody whose name will be Seku, who call himself Johnson. Somebody whose name will be Yapaolo, who change himself to charge. Benson, Benedict, and the rest of the queen name. Because those were the names that they came here, you know, they, they took from here. In order for other Liberian to fill in, they will have to assimilate with whatever they had. That was the beginning of the whole tribalism, discrimination, class system, who is better than who, who is educated, who is not educated. So those people who decided to go with them, to go by the Congo people, you could use to call them Congo, American Liberians, people who decided to go with them, to live with them, to work with them, some of who descended to school, started to carry their names. There, there was one, there's a name in Liberia called Yekasin. Some of those people were Madingo people. There are a lot of people that try to change their name just to fill in, to fit in, to, to, to make sure that they are a part of that society. They want to assimilate. They want to be part of the class system. So that was in the 18th century when it started. When Labrador got independent in 1847, they ruled the country for a very long time. But then when we now 
the indigenous Liberian decided to say, wow, we are tired with these people rule. The former, the, the, the stage of Kudita, led by President Samuel Kanyado from Grand Jide, saying, well, these people, they have, they have dominated our country, even though we are all part of this country, but they have dominated the country for so many years. So let the indigenous people come and take over the country. That's how Taba was killed. With the mindset that the domination of the American Liberian to Liberia is not good for Liberia. Indigenous Liberian were marginalized. They were not given their due. Uh, what, 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 what is that? Somebody. So there were a lot of things that were taken into consideration. So people thought because those people they were somehow class, hard class people. Today they call them the elitists, but they used to call them Congo people. So those other indigenous Liberians that were associated with them, they, they too they call themselves the Congo people. Today's date, there's no American Liberian in Liberia or anywhere. We're talking about hundreds of years year ago. More than one, one Labrador we are over 170 years now. None of those people living anymore. Everybody who is Liberian today is Liberian. Congo, native. There's nothing as such. It is divisive, it is the divisive elements of our country that continue to perpetuate that narrative. All the people that were calling themselves American Liberian, none of them live anymore. No. Now, the same Liberian people, indigenous Liberian that they met over there, are the same people over there. Why is it that there's no tribe in Liberia called Congo? You have only 16 tribes. Hold on, this guy is calling me back to back to Let me see what's going on here. I apologize. Please go ahead and share the show. We have to educate some of these crazy people out there that continue to defy our country based on Congo native. It is all scary, scary tactics. Everybody that perpetuates that argument of Congo and native, they are the most they, they are the most crazy people in our country. They are dumb, they are divisive, and they know nothing about Liberia. And they are the most unpatriotic Liberians who continue to introduce this idea of Congo and native. So when Samuel Do and the soldier, the military took power, because we try to remind ourselves on some of these things, because there are many Liberians, not in the, especially the Facebook politicians, the young people, some of them were not even born during the 1990 war. They never experienced what tribalism did to Liberia. They don't to talk about what happened. Some of them, they don't read history. They know nothing about the country. Whatever somebody tell them, somebody loud mouth, somebody crazy people, whatever they tell them on social media, that's what they follow. In the minds of many Liberian children, in Liberia, when you tell them, 
I'm a Madingo man. Oh, that man from Guinea. Without taking into consideration that even if your parent or your great grandparent came from somewhere, but our constitution, when you are born in Liberia, when you reach the age of 18, you can decide which nationality you want to take. But they don't take that into account because their fathers, their mothers, the ones that are troublers, the ones that are trouble bigot, are the ones that control their mind. So they train their mind to believe that certain group of people don't belong to Liberia. Certain group of people don't deserve certain things in Liberia. Many, many people, a lot of people were thinking that the whole idea of tribalism is more Let me let me see. There are certain people when they come here, I just let to, you know, like I said, anybody come here, you try to be you try to create distraction or insult or disrespect, I can just silently take you out. Period. I don't I don't, I don't waste time because I don't have time for all that nonsense. When you come here and want to learn, you, you listen. If you if you if you think you know you know it all, bye bye, go somewhere else. So, those people who took power at that time, led by Samuel Kendo, who was from Grand Jure County, a crime man, not only that they hated the people that were in government, not only that they were serious plan to eliminate all of them, they gathered people who were ministers and take them to sub take them to Sobich or coconut plantation, if you call, we call it, around the coastline right there in Morovia, and shoot and kill them, shot and kill them on camera. That these are common people. These are the people that support our country. These are the people that are taking our money. They're sending their children to school. That's, that, those were the things that they said at that time. The justification of killing them, they said they were corrupt. They were corrupt. But then when Thor took over, The indigenous, the indigenous Liberian became more corrupt, more divisive, more discriminatory than the American Liberians. Those people that they kill, their children, their family, majority of them left the country, traveled around the world. Some of them came to the United States. Some of them went to different, different countries. This is just in the 80s. I love to say 1979. But then, if the argument was these people, you know, they don't love Liberia, you know, they came from America, they came here, they took over our country, I know they don't love us. They do. But then when the indigenous took over, they became more ruthless. They became more divisive. They kill more of their own people. When you, when you, when you stand against the government, when you disagree with the, against the government, you either leave the country or be killed. That's what tribalism can do to our country. And guess what? Because of the same reason. We call ourselves native Liberian or indigenous Liberians. We could not manage ourselves. We could not manage our country because of the same tribalism. Because of the same tribalism. Because of the same greed for power. Hear me and hear me loud. Because of the same greed for power, 
we did not get along. Because Doe and his friends, especially his trap men, most of his closest people, not all crumb people, but most of his closest people, they went saying, and Harrison Penner and the rest of those guys that were very close to Doe, they were ruthless. They were lawless. They will kill people for free. When they see you are not a supporter of Doe, they can do anything to you. You don't leave the country or you lost. Imagine we said the other people were bad. They said the Congo people were bad. They took over the country. They were corrupt. They were doing their valley. They were not killing people. But not only we became corrupt, but we started killing each other. That led to many of the people who left the country, they ran away. You heard about Kuyongpa, Thomas Kuyongpa, right? Kuyongpa was supposed to be a Guillaume from Nima County. Kuyongpa was part of those people who killed Taba as indigenous Liberians that they want to take the country from the Congo people. But yet, what happened? They could not agree because of the same greed of power you are seeing today. Greed for power. That you must get power by all means or you must have power by, you know, all to yourself. You try to discriminate among each other. Guess what happened? When they could not agree, some of them fled the country. And Kuyongpa and some people decided that we took this power together. We all killed the Congo people. We put them on the firing squad. We take them to the beach, shot and killed them. So how come? How come now the do and cramp people there? Taking over the country too, marginalizing everybody else. They are the one, they don't want to get the money. They don't want to get everything. They don't want to enjoy. As a matter of fact, for the fear of other people that they took the power together, though had this group of people they call the Satu. Some of them they were crowned from other coast. They were not even speaking English. They used to speak French. Yes. Hear me and hear me loud. But guess what? Kuyong Pai, on the other hand, and other people, they left the country and decided to come back. The same thing. Can you imagine? You know, we always say, like, what goes around comes around. The same thing they did to Tobo, to kill Tobo and Congo people, that the indigenous people should take over the country. You see, indigenous people started killing each other for money, for power, based on tribalism, discrimination, nepotism. control. So, when Kuyongpa and the other guys came, the same thing the other people did to Tobo, the other than did to Tobo collectively, they said they want to eliminate the Congo people, American Liberia, they call them. They killed some of them. Some of the people that were killed on that French because some of the children are in America here today. They are wealthy. They are connected. They are educated. They can be of good use in Liberia. They can be employers in Liberia. They can bring a lot of private sector jobs in Liberia. They are doing very well here in America. 
They have, they, have, they, have, they have employed people here. They want to go back to Liberia, but they are still afraid. Everything is saying there's no job, no this, no that, but you are, you are your own problem. There are a lot of Liberians here who are capable of employing at least 10 people, 20, 100, even 1,000 people. But they are afraid of going to Liberia because of the same tribalism, because of the same corruption, because of the same greed for power. That's why if you look at our sub-region, even the Mono River region, not even the Air Force region, but just the Mono River region, all the country is better than Liberia. We just got big mouth for nothing big mouth. Zero. Because, this, because there's so much hate in our heart for each other. Because people who are the so-called educated ones, educated, so-called educated indigenous ones, are the most divisive elements of our country. I'm going to go back to where, where I was, but I just want to highlight this. So many Liberians, when I travel around, I meet many, many Liberians. Or even some of this show that we do here, people will call us how much they love Liberia, how much they want to go back to Liberia, how much they want to invest in Liberia to educate Liberians, to employ Liberians, to better the life of Liberians. But they are afraid to go back because of the same tribalism, corruption, and greed for power. So that's why when good people see something that resembles normalcy, something that resembles respect for the rule of law, something that resembles having a system that will combat corruption, a system that will open the market for competition, a system that will have that will provide equal opportunity to all Liberians, regardless of how you are perceived to be or who you are perceived to be. You say we got 16 tribes in Liberia. Did you see anything in Congo? So that's the dump, that's the dumpiest thing that they will tell you. They will put in the back of your mind, they, they are Congo people. Okay, Congo people, how can Congo people are not listed as one of the tribes in Liberia? It's nothing like a Congo. It's all divide safeness that people try to perpetuate. Because some of them were classless. Some of them, they were not educated. So they see everybody who, were, who are educated, they call them the Congo people. Because some of them, they didn't even know how to dress. When they see people dressing nicely, they call the Congo people. Growing up, we saw a lot of people, they calling themselves, you know, some of them were used to be boastful, calling themselves Madingo Congo, Basra Congo, Global Congo, you know, this Congo, that Congo. Some of whom that lived with those original American Liberians that came from here, some people that lived with, lived with them, some people that were genital for them, some people that, that they sent them to school, some of them that changed their name, they consider themselves as some, somehow better than other Liberians. So they call them Congo people. How come there's no Congo listed in Liberia as part of the 16 tribes? Even some of the tribes that you discriminate against, they are listed. So many people who are Madingo, who some, most of who refuse to change their name, most of who they refuse to follow the religion of those people that came, they were considered as threat. They were considered as people that could pose threat to their dominance. There were a lot of Liberians with no religion. They have no religion. But when those religions came from the Western world, and when the Islam came from the Arab war, when people, went, people were going around Africa to sell the idea, the religion, people, some people follow, 
some people follow Islam, some people follow Christianity. Though they can say, you know, Labria was founder of Christian principle, blah, blah, blah. They don't know history. It is because those that came, the American Liberians, that introduced the system of governance or system of control in Liberia that came from here, they were Christian. But they met, they met people in Liberia that were not Christians. As a matter of fact, Islam was, or was already in Liberia when those people came. They started working in the Liberia. Islam, not only Islam was there, Islam was practiced. People, area that we call today Guinea, before they drew the demarcation, before the Western, the colonial power came to Liberia, near Africa, the area we call today Guinea, all the way to Musadu, that cover Zerokori, Lola, all the area, all the way to Musadu. Those areas were considered as Liberia. But the colonial power, when they tried to draw the demarcation to divide us among ourselves, because they want to control us. That's how we have Guinea. That's why when you look at Guinea, look at Lofa. The Loma people in Guinea, Masanta area, and on the part, the Loma people in Lofa, they the same Loma people. Same brother, same family. The same family you can see in Lofa County, the same family they're in Guinea. If you go to the Gigadu region all the way to Kishidu, the Gisi people that are in Lofa, they are brother and they are family. As a matter of fact, one time George Lobo told me something I was shocked. Oh, so we don't know my mom from Guinea. He said his mom from Guinea. Their mom was a Gisi from Guinea. They are family with other Gisi people. But the white people came and divided us. They divided us for their own benefit. The Madingo in Guinea, the Madingo in Liberia, they're the same people. The Crown people in Grand Jire and the Crown people in Ivory Coast, they're the same people. That's why when the war came, many of people, many of Crown people that were in Ivory Coast, they never felt like they were stranger. Similarly, Madingo people. The Mono people in Lola area there. The, the Mono people in Bosu, those that, that were with our refugee in that area. The Mono people in Bosu, in Tuo, all the way to Zerekore. They're the same Mono people that are in Guinea, I mean, in Liberia. They speak the same way. They're family, in fact. As a matter of fact, I who from Nima County, Pain, to be specific, we know a lot of Mono people that were fam that family in Jeki, right across the, across the border in Guinea. But when they come to Liberia, they are Liberian. They are respected. Some of them were even given power. Some of them were even appointed as immigration officers. They were so we'll go and stop other Madinga people you from Guinea, even though they're too from Guinea. We saw that. Tribalism and discrimination is the one that destroying our country. But it hurts my heart to see people who call themselves educated people, so-called educated people, are the ones that traffic a uh, traffic and perpetuate tribalism forgetting about the effect the negative effect of tribalism on our country so i was talking about how not only tribalism from the war what we say and what we do but when we take tribalism to use it as a tool, not only to discriminate or to devour ourselves, but to kill other people. When those native people say they, they were native people, they were native soldiers, they this and that, they killed the Congo people, people that they perceived as Congo people, when they killed them, people came back, they came to the United States and other part of the world, and they feel like nowhere, there's nowhere like home. There's no tribe in Liberia called Congo. So they wanted to go back home. You know what they did? They have to force their way up back there. When Queen Kwa and other people came in, they said they want to take power from Doe. When they had a coup d'etat, a 
Crown people, I mean, Gio people in Nimba County, they started searching. Gio people and, and, and Monopoly, the Nimbians now start searching for Crown people and people from Grand Gilead to kill them because they feel like though any people were killing other people, they corrupted the country, they were stealing the country money, they started to kill other people. As a matter of fact, Madinga people were victimized because they felt that most of those people in Nimba County felt that <clears throat> Madinga people were supporters of Doe. So when that coup d'etat happened, some of them went and wrote their name on Madinga people properties, that this is our property. Or come and send all the way back to Guinea. Guess what? When the coup d'etat was reversed, when coup d'etat was not successful, Similarly, the crown people too, they start looking for every person who we call yourself Nibayans from Kyo. When Prince Jesus say, you know, they kill our people, they do that, they do that. All of them were involved. They all did the same thing. But everyone tried to play victim. Prince Johnson people. I don't know whether you ever heard, heard about Nimba Ray. On Chad Julu, Thomas Winston, and all the other guys. When the, when the coup d'etat was reversed, guess what they did? They went to Nimba. If, in fact, anybody that calls yourself Nimba and Gyo or Mano, specifically Gyo people and Mano people, they were stopped at the checkpoint and slaughtered them. Trouble, what tribalism can do to people. The same way the Gyo and Mono people were looking for those people there in Nimba, everywhere they go to kill them because they feel like the, imagine with the same group that came together to kill the Congo people, they started catching, killing each other for money, for power, for control. They're the same people trying to need to do the same problem in our country today. Tribalism, discrimination. Greed for power is the one that is destroying Liberia. Since Steve is here, I'm going to invite Steve into the conversation. Because I can talk about this thing for, for three, four hours, nonstop. Because I know exactly what happened. Some of it, I saw it. Some of it, I was very young. Some of it, I read about it. Some of it, I was told about people who were a part of it, who were involved with it so discrimination and tribalism is not the way forward the irony of the whole thing is that they will live with you they will use your service they will they will eat your money they will do everything with you but by the minute you want to contest for power because they agreed for power no you're a different person they will call you brother they will call you sister no, all of a sudden, oh, no, 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 the Congo people. Oh, no, 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 the Maningo people. Oh, no, 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 the person here, that, that girl, that, 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 that girl man from Ivory Coast, and not from here. Oh, no, no, they made a man man from Guinea. That kind of discrimination, it will never change our country for the better. It will only destroy us. If, in fact, the funny thing is that some some of the people who that have been at the receiving end of this systematic tribalism, they themselves are a bunch of tribalists. I've heard some Mandingo people telling me, why are you supporting this person and not the other person? Why are you supporting Dara Dillon, your own brother then running out supporting them? That's tribalism. Why are you supporting Yom Likanga Lawrence? You know, why you can't support Man some Manigo person? That's tribalism. Oh, Seku, every day you own a show, you talking about you other party of them, you're not talking about Aku. That's tribalism. If Aku want to talk about something, let Aku come to us. If, if we invite Aku, let him show up. Tribalism is the worst thing that will ever happen to Liberia. And if it's not eradicated, we'll remain where we are forever. And we're not going anywhere. Welcome, Steve. 
Well, Mr. Kane, good afternoon. Good morning to some. Good day to us in Arizona. It's just 12 p.m., so it's afternoon. Um, <clears throat> thank you for today. Today, as you all know, is another edition, 15th of May. I'm very excited to be here, as always. Um, most importantly, um, I want to welcome the Liberian people and tell them they're the most important people on Earth. But the Liberian women are the most beautiful women on Earth, Mr. Kanye, as you may know. I've been following the conversation uh, while I was driving. I was still following the conversation. Um, I want to quickly just read something quick. Um, you can look at the U.S. Um, it, on the United States Bureau of Census Citizenship Immigration. It was published by them. You can look at it. Let me just read this quick. It's just very short. Um, there was a question asked about the Mandingo people, <laughs> you know, concerning Liberia, the Mandingo people. And this was the re response. It states here, Mandingo ethnic, Mandingo ethnic group migrated into Liberia and Guinea over the past 200 to 300 years and has thus been viewed, listen, as outsiders. They typically settled amongst other people as traders, often carrying non-Mandingo women. Um, Mr. Kane, the reason I read that is because Liberia, based on our independence, I think will be turning in July, Liberia will be turning 176 years old. I still to be corrected. Me, I know math. I probably might not be good, you know, with history that much. But I think what's really important is not only the Mandingo, and when you read that article, Mr. Kone, you go further to tell you the reason. Let me let me read it because now you wrote it, I'm wrote it. So let me just read this part quick. The reason um, the Mandingos are pushed aside. Let's see. There has been a concentration of Mandingo in Upper Lofa County, bordering Guinea, but they are widely scattered throughout Liberia. The Mandingos were viewed as a distinct group of people because of their language and their Islamic faith. Hey, yeah, yeah. Um, again, that I mean, really, it on a US immigration site, it was published. You can go read it. Let me tell you this, Mr. Kane. Let me tell you this. And I will call one person in. In the entire, I got it, I got it, I got a screenshot in the documentation here. Maybe I will look at it too. To bring it up in the entire country in Liberia history, one of the people that were called out, I'm gonna go sit down somewhere. One of the people that were called out by the US government by extension, the president of the US got involved into tribalism for tribalism and for divisive conversation was Eugene Fargo. Yeah. It went as far as the U.S. government, the U.S. president, because when the embassy speaks near Monrovia, it means the American government has spoken. It's Eugene Fagon. Eugene Fagon was signal was signal out, and I'm calling Anina because he's important. I'm calling Anina because he brings anything important to the conversation, but I'm calling her name out because we see these things creeping amongst us again. And we need to stand against it. This is not a joking matter. A lot of people lost their lives because of some of these things. I will tell you the truth. People were haunted. 
people lived in terrible fear up until today. Some people are traumatized. People who are Liberians who contributed the sweat and the blood to the country were traumatized only because people pass around with these tribal affiliations. When you crown man, when you gyo man, when you mano man, when you mandingo man, your life is at risk during the war. And so we cannot stay in the round and allow these people to keep with these kind of conversations. And Mr. Kana, it pains me because, you know, these same people are the same people that pass around today or tomorrow. They only recognize the Mandingo people, the Muslim people, to be important. They only recognize them when they want for them to vote for them. Today, Seku not from Guinea. Today, Musa Belete not from Guinea. All the same people from Guinea, I mean. All the same people that are talking today. Almost all of the people in the United Party. When Musa Belete supported them through Ellen, Musa Belete never had a problem. He was not from Guinea, he was Liberian. He was Liberian at the time. But you know, history, history can judge us. And saying I said a lot, we kept the record. We part, we're not just on Facebook to talk. We can keep the record and we can remind you. May 6, 2019. If you think I'm lying, here is the publication. Let me just read the part that involved um, Eugene Fargo. The statement from the US Embassy. Y'all listen to it. Y'all listen to it. In fact, <laughs> let me read a statement quick, Mr. Cannon. The Embassy of the United States is concerned by the recent comments made in various fora, which could impede Liberia's progress. Y'all listen. To Those who promote through their words or deed, a Congo country divide do not have Liberia's best interests or that of their constitution at heart. Don't listen, you know. But rather appear motivated by personal ambition or fears. It is unacceptable for Prince Wyatt Johnson, do listen, you know. Representative Yeke Koluba and ex generals or others, former actors in Liberia Civil War, to incite unlawful act through ill concerned rhetorics that could jeopardize Liberia's hard won peace and security. And here's the part that involved Eugene Fagon. Eugene Fagon was a sitting deputy minister at the time. Now listen to this. Though. It is equally irresponsible for people in leadership positions in government or ruling party to promote such division as Deputy Minister Eugene Fargo has done on social media. Now we can say we Facebook people, we Facebook citizen, Facebook is for is a US property. It was made, developed, and everything in the US. They follow everything we say and we do. Let's see, take such as public stand, to take such as public stand, suggest that it is private opinion or personal right reflect and reflect a misunderstanding of the nature of public service in democracy. Basically, they were saying Eugene Fagon does not know what he was saying because one minute he Eugene Fagon, one minute he deputy minister. But I don't want to focus on Eugene Fagon because there are people that are pushing him up. Let me remind you of something. Let me just remind you of something. When Charles Taylor, when Prince Johnson ran away from Charles Taylor, and he couldn't, when Charles Taylor took the country, when Prince Johnson ran away from Liberia, he went in Nigeria. Almost all of the warring fashions, almost all of the boys left their banner fighting. 
I was in Guinea. I still remember. I was very young. The Liberians, who are Mandingos. I want you to go check the record. They are termed as Lord Rebel. Many of you think they were from Guinea. The truth of the matter is they were Liberian who had to flee the country to go to Sierra Leone and other parts of the country. When everyone gave up because Charles Taylor seemed as the strong man, nobody couldn't stand up to Charles Taylor. You know who blood was shared, who helped to push Charles Taylor and get Charles Taylor out of the country today? Do you know who? Go think about it. You think that, that Guinean air came to fight, Charles Taylor? You really think so? You really, really think so? No, they're not Guinean. Let's go back into history. There were Mandingo and Muslim people that wasted their own blood too. Yeah. I know it's a hard fact that you don't want to hear, but that's the truth. That is the truth of the matter. When Charles Taylor was getting rid of people from the Nima Sa, Saint Doki, or oh, Prince Johnson, the Prince Johnson were liberated. Where was he? When the educated people from Nima were getting eradicated and swept and wept away. And I believe the next group of people that they would have turned over the crown people. What about Prince Johnson? What about George Bullet then? And George Bullet were in America? And Prince Johnson were in, 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 in Nigeria? Y'all won't talk about history? Y'all know history? Y'all know who then fought for the peace that you are enjoying today? Y'all know who blood wasted for the peace that you are we enjoying in Labrador today? Y'all know who then doing it? Or y'all know who then did it? Y'all know who stood the course of time? Y'all know it? Y'all really know it? Y'all really, really know it? I don't know history. Y'all don't understand some things. This idea of people passing around and acting like their own labura, a certain group of people must be ostracized. And I heard Eugene Fargo and other people passing around talking a bunch of things that they don't know the thing that politics. No, they're not, poli they're not politics. They're not politics. They're not politics. The only problem I have with the Mandingo and the Muslim tribe in Liberia is because they have not been able to take a stand. The foolishness will stop if the Muslim and the Mandingo tribe just decide today that they will take a stand. Don't run nothing in our country. Close all the businesses, you're sure, everything down. Even the fuller people. Shut everything down. The jokers will behave themselves. In fact, they will give, they will give the Muslims rights to have a day in Liberia. I'm a Christian. In fact, I play a huge role in the church. In fact, I serve, I serve in highest leadership in the church. In fact, my very first degree is in, the, in religion. You know, when we're talking some of these things, some of you who are not, you can't fight for God, that God made you. The fact that you are even insecure about some other religion means that your God is insecure. Let me tell you today. That you may God like God, you can fight for God. I see you're passing around, you're just scared, scared. You can fight for God. Who told you that you can make people to turn to the way you treat your friend, human being, will even make that person to want to turn to your religion. You don't need to preach to them. You don't. So but I'm saying this because Mr. Kane and other people, when they say it, it would you would think it's a religious thing. Let me say this, Mr. Kane. Let me say this. That this these are not things I would joke with because. These are things that we need to start. This is where the conversation starts. Even the Congo, Muslim, Christian, the other person not from that, not from that. Let me tell you where it comes from. Like the, like, like the ambassadors said, like the United States government said, it's out of fear. These people are afraid. They are afraid. And let me say this to Tenno Yomli, Kanga Lawrence, and other people who are sitting and saying nothing about all these things that are going on. Politics is politics. But well, I've always stood and I will always stand. I don't care who it is. When you want somebody, I will say the issue of Grand Basel. I told you yesterday, Mr. Kane, when we were driving, I told you my heart. I pulled up my heart to you in the car. I told you. We drove for almost 30 to 45 minutes to your sister's house. We had a conversation in the car. I never told you I would bring that conversation to the show. But I pulled up my heart to you. Yomni Kanga Lawrence does not own Liberty Party. If anybody should claim Liberty Party, they're foolish and stupidity you're passing around with. If anybody should say they're claiming only Liberty Party, it should be Charlie Broskin. 
Say you ain't get common sense. If Yomli Kanga Lauren decides to go support Joseph Human Puaka, it's okay. That's all right. Her constitutional right, she can do that. And not nobody should be mad at her about it. But this idea, this idea that Yomli Kanga Lauren is taking off of that position. And Yomli Kanga Lauren want to pass around and impersonate that she's the political leader. It's wrong. And she is wrong for doing that. And Joseph Human Puaka should condemn it. All Liberians should condemn it. It's wrong. It is wrong. Don't be kind of It's not a political leader. It's okay. She can still move on with life. Nothing wrong with it. She's a senator. Her name is recognized in the country. She can play her role. She is not a political leader. Let her move on. Nobody is asking her to support anybody. What people are saying is simple. You are not a political leader. Stop impersonating. Stop saying you are a political leader. That's easy. That's respectable. That's not the biggest thing to ask for. And it should be respected. This people, the people, why you talking about, oh, and the other, and the other person take the people party, the other person take the people party, the other person take the people party. You got no senses in your brains. Most of you. Some of you are older. Some of you are younger. Some of you are educated. Some of you might not be educated. Some of us, we're poor, we're rich, we're married, we're single. Regardless of your status, for once, let common sense reign. Thank you, Steve. We're disappointed in all of you guys. Let me let me let me add to what you just said. Um, somebody asked, somebody said, you know, oh, you're talking, whatever you're talking right now, the old the whole history, the old story, talk something new. Because your minds are not developed. Some of you are a bunch of stooges that only follow what your masters put out there. But it is incumbent upon us to educate you, to tell you the danger of what you are doing. Somebody, oh, you know, nobody just about that today. We're going to get there. You know, Quality aside, Joseph Newman Buaga, as Costa said in 2017, as Bronskin said, Joseph Newman Buaga is a tribalist. Quality aside, he moved with people who are tribalist. He worked with people who are tribalist. He always bringing people around who are tribalist. Eugene Fangon is a perfect example. Galapa Kotima, all the Madingo and Loma fight in Lofa County was perpetuated, organized, and executed by Galapa Kotima. The fight between Madingo people and Loma people. Let me give you a little history. Before the war, Madingos and Loma in Lofa County never fought. And say, uncle and nephew. As a matter of fact, there are some, some Madingo people that other Madingo people refer to them as Loma Madingo. Because you know what? When the, when the Loma people and Madingo people, the intermarriage between them, the children of those Loma women, some people started referring to them as Madingo Loma, Kotoma Mania. Some of the people that even some of them are even discriminated, being discriminated against by some other Madingo people. That these people they are not real Madingo. That's how much Madingo and Loma people were together. But when the Bakadu massacre happened, because the same trouble is in where in the same people. They were engaged in tribalism that killed other people. They came from Nimba and other part of Liberia and they went to Bakadu, Lofa County, Kodubuni district. They gathered all the Mandinga people and Fula people and told them, you come together. You're, we are your strangers. 
We will not do anything to you. Bring all your belongings. Bring everything you have, your gold, your sheep, chicken, everything you have, bring it. We are a stranger. You are a stranger father. Bring them. Accept us. We came here, we came here to fight the government, not to fight you. But guess what they did? They slaughtered over 300 people in daylight. Madingo, innocent women and children. The one that could escape, escape. That created animosity between the people that were family, people that live 100 years or more together, intermarriage. If it's that Madingo family in Lofa County, like my mother was telling you the other day, her mother, she said her mother was a lawman. The Lara Madingo, there are a lot of family in Lofa County. The mother is Loma, or the mother or the father is Loma. The mother is Madingo, or the father is Madingo. And vice versa. That's how that's how much they were living together. But because of the same tribalism that other people took from other counties and other areas of Liberia, they brought it to, to Lofa County, the discrimination became real. The Galapa Quatima that we just talked about, since he was superintendent of that place, most of the killings happened. As a matter of fact, Steve, to tell you how much, you know, I'm telling you that when people say Joseph Walker is a tribalist, this guy they call Steve Zago. You didn't know that some part of last year, Steve Zago was arrested in Masanta, Guinea, because there was a fight between Madingo people and Loma people there where Steve Zago went and supported the Loma people to fight against the Madingo people in Guinea, beyond Labi beyond border. Steve Zago was arrested by Guinean authority. That is it, Allah. Those are the people that Joseph Walker associates with. What, Mr. Kane? Look at Eugene Van Gogh. Mr. Kane, please let me know add this one. Yeah, you know, that, I mean, you're saying, let, let me conclude. Joseph Barker himself, I want to come to this. When I personally listen to Joseph Nima Barker himself, saying, I mean, he, he Joseph Barker kind of write off all the American, all the liberal people that are living in, in, in America here. When I listen to Joe Bucket, now they say, I listen to him say, when those strangers come from America to come here, they want to be president. When they can't speak the people's language, when the people, people don't know them, when they can't speak the people's language, I heard Joseph Bucket saying that. So now speaking, local vernacular now, is a yardstick now to, to measure as to who is a citizen of Liberia or who is not. All of you that are here, whether you're supporting Joseph Walker, you're supporting Kumi, you're supporting your whoever you're supporting. How many of you children are speaking your your dialect? How many of your children? Even those of you living in Morovia, how many of your children that speak your local dialect? How many of them? Oh, now speaking local vernacular. Is the only yardstick to measure as to who is Liberian. When I listen to Joseph Barker saying, Oh, you know, the people, this no stranger can come from America. There's so all of us are in America here now. You're all stranger automatically. In Joseph Barker's mind. Because your children they can speak Madingo, or your children they can speak Gio, Mano, or other tribes in Liberia, then they are not Liberians. They are stranger. So a worker can perpetuate that's, that kind of narrative. It will surprise me to see Bwakai being supported by this guy. So that's the point I wanted to ask Steve. You can take it from there. Well, some of you will record. Some of you will record. 
in, very interestingly, remember the senatorial election in Lofa County, Romaya Mufofana? You remember the election? Mr. Kane, you remember? Maya Mufofana throughout the years served the Unity Party. Maya Mufofana did. She did. If there is anything, she should have been preferred on the ticket, especially as a female too as well. That should have been the, a deciding factor. Just say you my boy, I got left her out. And you know who he be? Bernie Samoka. And miss everything that was going on. That he was warned to not pick Bernie Samoka. Bernie Samoka had that stigma on him. It was Joseph Yuma. I, the videos are here. We play it on Saturday. We can play again if you want. It was Joseph Yuma Boyaka. Child Walker Bronski would have never, never spoken out against Joseph Yuma Boyaka. He would have been quiet. But when 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 the tribal division started and Joseph Yuma Boyaka sat there, encouraged and endorsed it, Child Walker Bronski had to come out. Let me say this. Announcement to your CPV people. Like I've always said, your enemy, the person that you're supposed to go after, is not your weird. No, <laughs> it's not your weird. It's not CDC. Don't get it twisted. You ain't in no opposition unity. The unity party, just say you're my bracker. And when you're talking, nobody gonna go after the keke lere no. One of them can put five, ten million on the phone. They can send and send with somebody still corrupt money and send it to them before they survive. We're not discussing no one. That Joseph Yuma Puaka said, you need to address. Nobody should be afraid. You ain't got nothing to lose. At the end of the day, Joseph Yuma Puaka not going nowhere. When CPP and Joe are in second round, Joseph Yuma Puaka will have two options, three options sit out of the race, support Joe or support the CPP. It will be their call. Either way, they will have to make a decision. Nobody should be afraid. I will say again here, and I will say it anywhere I go. Nobody should be afraid. Be like Child Walker Broski, you're standing up for one. Even Mr. Cummings, I'm saying it here. If Mr. Cummings, you can send a video to him, you'll send it to him. If you know, Mr. Cummings, don't be afraid to call Joseph Yuma Boaka the trouble bigot he is. Don't be afraid to call him like that. He let let me tell you something. He he is he is not he is a divisive old man, he is not a good man. He is not a good I don't talk to the Kekele, I don't talk to the Pigine. They're not important. I don't talk to the slave master. I don't talk to the master, uh, to, the, to the slave. What was my town slave there for? Joseph Yuma Bwaka has never been a leader. He will never be a leader. He is a divisive, bad old man that has sat around, benefited from everything. Everything. Even the alien I'm talking about today. In an alien made Joseph Yuma Bwaka for our president. Then I early made Joseph Yuma Baga vice president. That Joseph Baga made himself vice president. That Joseph Yuma Baga made himself vice president. Y'all be afraid. Y'all be saying on there, giving yourself hat down. Y'all be afraid. Y'all don't be afraid. Y'all caught on the crook that Joseph Yuma Baga is. The divisive old man. Very bad. He's a crook. I say it. And, the, and the, the way I know that is this. The way I know that is this. Most recently, he played his key allies. Not only that, not only that, Joseph Yuma Braga sat under his age mate. Ellen Johnson said that his age mate. I disagree with Ellen Johnson Sellies in some of her policies on the way to handle no car and everything. I can disagree with her on that. Don't get me wrong, I disagree with her on that. I don't stand with that. The corruption level, I don't stand with that. The mismanagement, I don't stand with that. But what I will stand with. What I will stand with. Or oh, Ellen Johnson Sally, but if the Ellen Johnson Sally that, that is equal. Hmm? Or oh, Ellen Johnson Sally birthday. She was disgraced. Driven, pushed out of the party. And you know who was saying I read that and allowed all of that to happen under the watch? Right under the watch? That Joseph Parker. That Joseph Parker. He is tribalistic. He is. If if he were if he were a leader. 
even with a division that is going on, with this tribal line that they are playing, he will say something to it and tell him to stop this nonsense. Thank you, Steve. Um, let, let, let me add. You know, one of the reasons that actually triggered this topic today is the resurgence of divisive element, unscrupulous element within the Liberian political space. When Charlene's brown skin name was mentioned as potential running mate for Alice Cummings, we started to see people talking about Congo people ticket, queer people ticket, elitists. They will use different languages. They will use different terms, different terminologies to qualify their bigotry. Yeah. Sometimes they will be afraid to say it the right way. So people will not get it. But they themselves who traffic in tribalism and discrimination, they understand each other. But let me tell you something, Steve. That's why this conversation, we just started it. Many people thought, you know, when they say tribalism, it was about, you know, Madingo people, the Kram people. No. There is a systematic. There is well-organized plan by some political actors in Liberia to discriminate. It's called divide and rule tactics. To discriminate us against each other and get their way through. When Charlene Bruskin found out who was the originator, the founder of the Liberty Party, he was not stranger at the time. So what I'm trying to say here. The people of Grand Basel County, whether you support Nyombli, you support Bezonga, you support Charlie, or any political actors in, in, in Grand Basel, please do not allow these people to divide you. People have the right to support whoever they want to support. Nyombli has a right to go with Joseph Bwakai. Charlene got the right to support Musa ability. Anybody got the right to support whosoever they want to support. Most definitely. Not just the fact. We can have our disagreement based on policy, based on policy, based on history, based on performance. But the, this whole term, Congo people, Congo ticket, quick ticket, Elitist is the dangerous way to proceed. You know why it's dangerous? It's a loo, it's a fight they can't win. It's like a racism in America. Racism in America is real. But there are more good people in America than the racist people. That's why the racism is dying. There are more people that fight against racism than the people who traffic and perpetuate the idea or ideology of racism. Similarly, Liberia, there are many Liberians who, who know the danger of tribalism. People know Crime people were slaughtered because they were crime. Gio people and Mono people were slaughtered because they were Gio and Mano. Madingo people were slaughtered because they were Madingo. Loma people were slaughtered because they were Loma. That's what tribalism can do to a country. So for people like Joseph Nima Bwaka being so-called 
elder and the wise man to even sense or say utter any trouble slurs anything that will sound or resemble tribalism to be coming from people like Justin Yuma Boga to say the people can come from Liberia, you know, they can come from America and come here. They don't they can they can they don't know our people, they can't speak their language. Can you imagine? So the children there who Baka supported then that are in America here, their children that are here, how many of them can speak Madingo, Baso, Gio, Mano? How many of our children? There? I know many children in Liberia, right there in Morovia, they don't even speak. They travel from their mother and father. So they don't have place in Liberia, in Bwaka's mind, in supporter's mind. So this idea, Congo, and this and that, do you know? Let me tell you something. There are a lot of Liberians here, like I said, that are very, 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 very wealthy. They are very, very educated. That they can be entrepreneurs in Liberia. They can build a solid private sectors. But you know, in Liberia, in Liberia, when they say investor, Many of the little mind, the peanut brains, when they say investor, their mind can go only on white people because that's the make believe. That's how they train their mind. A, a Muslim man, a Madingo man, a Basa woman, a crew woman, a crew man, Mano woman can move from America here today and carry one million dollars to invest in Liberia. That person will not be regarded as an investor. They will not get the, the, the requisite acknowledgement or respect. But a white man, poor white man, Lebanese man, because of the color of his or skin, they go to Liberia today, they, they establish themselves, they will be respected more than the elaborate man, a typical elaborate man who even have more money than that Lebanese guy. Because that's the mindset. They make you to believe that white people are better than the, the, the black people. They want they want you to do something for them. But they want to respect you because you are one of them. They want you to do everything for them, but they will not listen to you. We have large, let me tell you something. They are in the minds of some little peanut brains. Some of them think say white people are intelligent more than, black, more than black people. But wait till you go to school or some of them. That's how you will know that you are how smart you are as a black person. Some of them think say when you are white, if especially in oh, my man, that white people are, that what the white men say. say. Thinking that white people are smarter or better than you, because that is the, the make believe. That's the mindset. That's how they train your mind. So if you don't develop your mind, you will be following these stupid people. They make you stupid. They make your children stupid. Your whole generation will continue to be stupid because your minds are not developed. Steve, I got somebody to my door. Maybe that citizen, or maybe that UP people. Let me get my gun before I go open the door. Yeah. But anyways, Mr. Kana, why you going, uh, folks? This thing is simple. My only concern, like I said, I don't care who chooses to support who. Um, it's people's right; they must be respected. If somebody asks you to say, "Let be my roommate," and you see you don't, you say you don't find it fake, that's your right. It's okay; it gotta be respected. From the ANC or the CPP people or the Liberty Party people, you need to respect you know, Yomi Kanga's parents' wish. Her choice and her decision, yeah, but I like the fact that even in the conversation, she made a key statement that she didn't see collaboration or partnering at this time. That's okay. 
My only reservation and my only quite my only concern is the young Nicaragua Lawrence. If you are not the political leader of the Liberty Party, don't go say you are the political leader of the Liberty Party. Drop that political leader title, associate whoever you want to associate with, keep it moving. It is what it is. That is the only that is the only place where I disagree with her. I don't agree with her on it today. I don't agree with her on it tomorrow. Because when we want her from the beginning, pay their money so that you cannot be a spell. They say we are stupid. We don't know what we're talking. We're talking it today again. We stupid again. We communist people. We ANC people. We Berete people. We CPP people. We're saying it again. Stay away from using the Liberty Party, the political leader titles, and the Kanga Lawrence. Stay away from that. You will not die if you stay away from it. You will not. Leave it alone. Go to what you're supposed to do. Go support the ticket you believe in. It is your right. It is your right. But passing around and saying you are the political leader, no. It is unconstitutional. It is not the right thing to do. The oh. other people who choose to pump you up to do it, they probably are already shameless. They are already shameless. Waka sat on there, a boss lady for 12 years, Ellen Johnson said he sat on there and encouraged the beginning to disrespect the woman. On the woman's birthday, to cause her and expel her from the party. I don't know what the garden can be thinking. So, 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 still, let me say, let, let me say this, huh? Even if you want, you want power with your boss. It's okay for you to just shut your mouth and keep it moving. You don't need to fight in public. That your boss. Simple. So, 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 I want to say this. Um, I will not call personally. I will not call this about guy a crook. You're not calling what? I will not call you a crook. I will oh, not I'll call you a crook. I know, I know you will. I know you will. Oh yes. But I will not call you a crook. Uh -huh. But I know he's a tribalist. And now that somebody tell me, I heard from him. I listened to Joseph Baga himself involved in in eccentric behavior. I was listening to Boyzo Baga himself promoting tribalism when he, when he said strangers will not come from America. They want to be president when they can't speak their, our people's language. Our people don't know that when they can't speak their language. That is a tribal slur. That is ethnocentric behavior and it is unacceptable. And Joseph Baka is not calling on those guys who are a bunch of tribalists to stop it. Joseph Baka accepting Union Fangong. Fangong, who called Joseph Baka all the name in the world? The Joseph Baka, the, the Joseph Baka was useless, according to Fangong. The Joseph Baka in a government that like he's not there. The Joseph Baka live in a country that's almost like it does not exist. We have the video. I will not call him, the reason why I will not call him a crook, like I will not do a lot of, a lot of different people, is that certain thing I just decided not to say. That's me. That doesn't mean other people can say it. That doesn't mean other people say they are wrong or they are right. But I decide what to say, what I will not say. But when you are involved in, a, in an act that I know and I see it, I will talk about it. So, Steve, the dropout slurs that you continue to use, especially they, try, they started to use, they started using now, it's not going to be a winner for them. And secondly, what I wanted to say is that I don't want to get involved again with the whole Liberty Party politic. Because you know what? I tie away. We have played our part. We have played our part. Behind the scene, in public, and in private. From the start, we talk to Musa Belete in private and in public. We talk to Yomli Kanga Lawrence in private and in public. We talk to some of their close people in private.
Beatrice Kangas, who's here, Nyombli's older sister. She knows how many times I call her. Work on, work on your sister. Let me continue to work on Musa. Let him not, let him not destroy their party for nobody. Not for ANC, not for Unity Party. We did that. Everybody were in their feeling. People now are listening. As a matter of fact, nobody should even be playing victim. This one happened to me, this one happened to me. To use that as an excuse to bring peace to yourself. When people fight, different people will do different things to each other. But I can tell you, the, the, the Liberty Party fight is over. There's no fighting in the Liberty Party anymore. People have taken their position. People have decided where they want to go and what they want to do. So the, the new thing that came out, we thought it was a, an opportunity. No, but Mr. Kane, Mr. Kane. You want me to conclude? I, I want to see something. No, no, no. Let me ask you the question before you conclude. Maybe you can conclude it. When you say the Liberty Party, there is no fight in the Liberty Party, then my question becomes, if Senator Yomi Kanga Lawrence is not the political leader or the standard bearer, she cannot be impersonating. Yeah, but that's not the Liberty Party fight. That's not a fight in the Liberty Party. You know but that I mean? could be a fight because she will be she could be taken to court for it. Yes, yeah, she could be. But that's because not a fight in the Liberty Party. You know what, you know what that is? What is what is it? Okay. Normally recognize the fact that. Pet the law. She was, she's not the political leader. She knows it. That's why Yumbly agree to even get into a discussion to be reinstated as the political leader of the Liberty Party. She knows that. Until they can they can go back to court and go back again to redo everything they have done. I'm sure, but what we read from the Supreme Court, Supreme Court is not going to talk about this thing anymore. Unless there will be, let me tell you something. Let's say Musa and executive the committee decide to sue somebody to go to some to go to court with somebody. That will be a different new case. That was there is no fighting in the Liberty Party right now. Liberty Party, Musa and everybody agree that Numbly and Dillon and all the parliament, they are members of the Liberty Party. Position, no position, they are member of the Liberty Party. So whoever try to take some position for themselves, the Liberty Party people can decide what they want to do with it. So that's not my fight. That's what I say. What I wanted is to make sure the fight should not get to the level where it, it reach. And I try in public, in private fail we, we move we move so even most ability going on air stating that young is no longer she's not this that's like a being redundant normally knows it the court document went out everybody knows exactly what happened that's why people are angry because other people feel like the court decision it was not it was not in their favor they feel it was not fair in fact i wrote something i listened to something when Yomli said people cannot use their influence you know like or money you know to influence anything in, in you know in the court alleging that there was some foul play in, in the decision of the court because they, they did not they, 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 they didn't agree with the result or the condition never I do that so what i want to say here steve is that i don't want to waste my time on liberty party fight anymore if liberty party people they like it let it go up let it come down so long they are fighting on policy on idea that's fine but you need allow anybody especially people of grand Basel county you should allow anybody to divide them by telling them some of them are not one of them. 
Oh, Charlene is now, now one of you people from Grand Basso County because you think she's Congo. Oh, Charles Gonskin is no longer important in the Basa politic. Men who brought Basa on the spotlight. Let me tell you something real quick. When this guy was president pro tem, when he said he was going to resign, when he said he was coming to launch a political party, that time I used to work with Transport Union. I was one of those people who donated their buses to go and receive him at the airport. I know how dangerous it was at the time when Charles Taylor is in power for somebody to say, I'm going to be an opposition to Charles Taylor. We knew why, why it was. It was, very, it was very risky. But he took the risk. He made the Basa people proud. He made democracy proud. And this guy stood up every time when it was needed, when it comes to standing for the rule of law and our constitution. Oh, but now, because of politics, his daughter is now one of Liberian. His daughter now is now a Liberian. Oh, the Congo people. Stop the stupidity. Joseph Waga should stop his people. Let it let him make the case. Based on Waga's accomplishment, based on his experience, based on the tangibles based on Barker's policy prescriptions that they think that will change Liberia. Let them make the case on those things. But this trouble thing is a fight you cannot win. You will lose it. Even people within or around you will not support you on this. Because tribalism costs Liberia so much death, so much life. So my focus today is on the people who are tribalist to stop it. It's not going to help. You try it, it did not work. Why waste your time? Fangong was one of the reasons why Fangong was fired because he's the tribalist. So some of the people that will come here that are angry, when Dr. Barker's name is mentioned, they are more than sedition. When some of the people are in power, when you question Joseph Barker, you will go to jail. Or if they have the means to kill you, they will kill you. Because they are so intolerant. So if you see anybody, Steve, anybody going to going to tribalism or making trouble slurs as their only way of campaigning, it means that they have nothing to offer to Liberia. Yeah. It means that they have no case to make. It means that they have no policy. They have no accomplishment. They have nothing to present to the Labrin people. So what they will do, they will refer to tribalism, discrimination, dividing people against each other. Just make the case. For example, normally I've decided to go with Bokai. Charlene, they have decided to go with commies. I'm not talking about vice presidency. I'm talking about support for now. Because I know Yomli is not going to be vice president. That's not what she, she's running for. She, she's just there to campaign for Bakai and Jeremiah Kuhn and the Prince Johnson. Charlene decided to go for commies. Let all of them go and make the case to their people. And eventually, if Charlene is picked as the running mate for Boakai, I mean for Comis, let both Charlene and Nyombly go to their people. What no fighting? Just make the case. These are sisters. You will stay you will stay eat together and maybe be friends and be sisters and still make your case. This that's politics. Let Charlene go and tell her people, well. My people are here. 
one of your daughters, one of your daughters is here to tell you, say, the LeBron people want me to be vice president. I want your support. Like young girl will go and say, you know what? I am your daughter too. I've been here. I've been in politics longer than this girl. This girl. She don't know what she's doing. You all follow me. I support John, uh, Prince Johnson and Jeremiah Kuhn and Pokai. The one that's the one that running to be to be vice president, the one who is not, not really but just campaigning. Let them go and make the case. Let the Basa people decide based on what would be in their best interest. If Wakai, Prince Johnson, and Jeremiah Kuhn will be in their interest, that's fine. That means that's what they want. And they want also to see one of their daughter as vice president of Liberia. If there's something they want, if they choose to go for that, that's okay. But do not, when you see people going to travel in Steve, like you say, it's out of fear. It's mean, it means that people got nothing to offer. They got nothing to show to the Labrin people. Whatever you want to say, Steve, I will go to you, then from there we'll open the line. Yeah, Mr. Kane. Well, to be honest with you, um, that was my only recommendation to the senator um, to avoid any kind of further noise. Okay. Who make the case? Like you said, it's okay for people to choose sides. It's okay for people to support who they want to support. Are they right? My only thing is the impersonation can lead to problems. Yes. That's all. Just stop saying I, 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 exactly. You're stop right. Saying, the Liberty Party or you came the Liberty Party the way there, it, it creates confusion. Make the case. Support who you want to support. There's nothing wrong with it. And that does not mean, let me say this. That does not mean Senator Yombi Ganga Lawrence cannot come back later on and say she supports, you know, the CPP in the second round. You know? So 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 let me let me respond to one of our brothers here. One of my brothers. Ooh. One of my brothers. One of my brothers, I want to respond to him. You know, this person said it yesterday. Oh, stay cool. You claim for to come from, you know, Nimba, why you hate Prince Johnson and Jeremiah Kuhn and blah blah blah. No, my brother, I do not hate Prince Johnson. I do not hate Jeremiah Kuhn. My problem with John, both Jeremiah Kuhn and Prince Johnson is not about trap. It's not about their trap. As a matter of fact, my policy has nothing to do with trap. My policy is about who you are. What you can do, what you have done, what is expected of you. Brain Johnson is on audio, is on is on audio. You are saying listen to him. The man is saying how he killed his own people. He was warning this guy who is now his darling boy, Jeremiah Kuhn, telling Jeremiah Kuhn, why you want to run against this person? What you want to run against that person? In fact, before you try me, you got to know me. When that person try me, they die. When that person try me, they die. When that person try me, they die. When the, when, when too much groupie try me, he's crippled. I know people now that buy him too. You think I don't care about them? People that he say he kill or they die. That his God killed them. I do people not in buying. They don't have family in Nima County. What are you talking about? I care. I care about my people. That's why I don't like poor people to be my leaders. And the fact that Prince Johnson him pick Jeremiah Kuhn, and the fact that Jeremiah Kuhn being associated with a lot of corruption with Thomas Fala, and the fact that Jeremiah Kuhn have voted almost 90% of the time to support the corruption that is 
oh, that have overshadowed our country right now by George Weah and his people. Those are my problem with Jeremiah Kuhn. It got nothing to do with Trump. Jeremiah Kuhn is no different from CDC. That's my problem. Jeremiah, let me tell you something. Even when I heard that just that what's his name? Uh, uh Comis was talking to Jeremiah Kuhn and Prince Johnson. People that talked to me, people that I talked to, I told them that Comis is treading on the wrong direction. I said, if he goes there, uh, he, 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 will, he will feel the weight of the Labyrinth people. I can't tell people who to choose, but when you make the wrong choice, we will tell you. So there are a lot of good educators. And it, I mean, a lot of good people able party people educated yeah. and intelligent in buyings that i will support any days have you heard me saying anything negative about tiawon gonglo no the only problem with tiawon gonglo for his presidency the man got no money and the man also does not have charisma a lot of people it don't don't gravitate to watch him like that but the guy is a true son of liberia true son of nima county who is also tested, who resigned from a corrupt government because of corruption. He may have his own problem, but I'm never, I don't have any negative thing about him. He's an Imayan too, I respect him. Similarly, Edith Gunglo, I respect her. So my disagreement with people is not driven by tribalism. No, it's about Liberia. Jeremiah Kuhn is no different from CDC. As a matter of fact, the last election that big Jeremiah Kuhn, Senator, Jeremiah Kuhn was supported and financed by CDC. CDC, just like they did in Lofa, in the case of Councilor Jala, they seen the day in Lima. So Jeremiah Kuhn is by extension of CDC, pro CDC product. CDC produced Jeremiah Kuhn for the Lima people. Now, CDC, Jeremiah Kuhn now, the darling boy for Joseph Wakai. And before Jeremiah Kuhn even accepted to be the darling boy for Joseph Wakai, he had to go and talk to, this, to, 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 to a key, key player in the CDC, in the CDC government. He had to go and meet with, and meet with this guy, uh, 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 Eddie Snow, who openly said he's going to be the campaign manager for George Weah. Jeremiah Kuhn, not supposed to be vice president of Obama, had to suck, suck the, 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 the approval or the blessing of, of, of Edwin Snow. Some of you are just a bunch of followers. You don't pay attention to details. You don't pay attention to anything going around you. But you're just there following you because Joseph Baker is mentioned. But even Joseph Baker bring cat, snake, anything, you just follow it. A good thing. That's bad. That's why people can insult you people. When they say you got peanut brain, that's the reason because you must have the intellect to distinguish what is wrong and what is right. To know what is good and what is bad. But to say because that person brought it, because it belongs to this person, so no matter what, whatever this person brings, it's good. No. There are a lot of good sons and daughters of Nima County. Prince Johnson is not one of them. Prince Johnson is a killer. Nobody should be proud of Prince Johnson. The man who not only he killed president on camera, the whole world saw it. But the man himself stayed proud and telling them Nimba Labrian people when guns were silent. How many people he killed? They person try me, he died. They person try me, he died. They person try me, he died. They person try me, he crippled. He's proud to say that. And you are proud to support that kind of person? And Joseph Baga is proud to bring that kind of person closer to him? That, that party, a Prince Joseph party. If, just, if Jeremiah Kuhn becomes vice president, the government will be ran by Prince Johnson, Jeremiah Kuhn, and Joseph Nima Baga. Joseph Baga, Baga, for the most part, he just not doing anything. As you can see now, Jeremiah Kuhn, the one that running, you know, everything going on. 
even all the bribery going on, giving money to these people, that person, meeting people, making the case, Jeremiah Kuhn do everything. That's just how the government going to look like. And Jeremiah Kuhn, it was handpicked for by Prince Johnson. So automatically, technically, Jeremiah Kuhn and Prince Johnson were on the government. Who want to see that in, in your country? Somebody who was a chair on the Armed Services Committee. America said, no, 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 no. This is not safe. That's the man you want to bring closer to the presidency. Why you take Labrador people for? Then you want to use tribal slurs to campaign, to bring rebel. They, just recently, Prince Johnson said on the radio, on Spoon Talk, he said, because I'm a former rebel leader, the people are afraid to bring me closer to money. They are afraid to bring me closer to power. They are afraid of me because I'm a former rebel. They may just say that a few weeks ago. And then right after that, Joseph Parker said, yo, yo, come, me and you. <laughs> See? I don't know. I got a I got a caller that I've been on for a while. Um okay, take the call. Let the few call. Mr. Kennedy, the only thing the only thing I gotta say before I bring the caller in is yeah, you know, we take it, we, we, we're not even taking a lot of call. We just done one caller because we gotta go. Yeah, the, the, we gotta leave from here. Right. The only thing the only thing I wanted to say, you know, the only thing I wanted to say is game one. Um we are aware of the plans that they have for you and I, uh, especially the other people from the other side. Please. Please, you please bring your play here. <laughs> we are set. Ready? Steve, I'm Go sorry, ahead. I'm between the person. Let me say this out. Uh, somebody sent us money. Uh, because we, we talk about uh the project uh from the start of the show. Um there's not been a lot of people, but at least uh one person sent hundred dollars to Zell, and that person first name is uh I know, let me see. The person name is Esther. Um, okay. I got a lot of extra. I don't got. I don't want to call the last name. And then Joseph Conto sent ten dollars. What I mean, man, said Joseph Conto sent ten dollars to Cash App. So let me make sure I should see the other Cash App. Then somebody sent ten dollars earlier today, right when, right when we started the show. But let me see what the person said. If you call their name or not. Yeah. yeah, so Mr. Kind of like I'm saying, you know. Yeah, so I just want to make sure, you know, this person, uh, you know, want to recognize it. And somebody wrote today that he sent money to us last week. Yes, I saw your name. And we, we, because a lot of people don't want to, want to call your name, I think it was $50 or so. Yeah, we saw it. Uh, but I want to say thank you to everybody who have contributed to SKTV. And thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, let's bring the caller in. Caller, caller, what's your name? calling from, please. Thank you for the patience. And the regular first time caller, Brazilian Monk, I love to open the show. Yeah, boy. <laughs> My man, what is going on? Man, I've been part the conversation, like you said, and Sekou been making the case about the, the probabilistic politics. Oh, oh man. They have Bluetooth. Uh, they say, that Bluetooth, when you touch it, that's what you can do. I tell you, that a good one can do that. The, 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 the one that Google can do it. It's it too sensitive. <laughs> Hello? Sorry, sorry, my man. Sorry. So I take it from my ear, I can go off. Go ahead. I'll, put, oh, I'll keep okay. it there. So you can get me now? Yeah, we're much better. Yeah, so I was saying, like I was saying, Sebu made a case, you know, he just saw the entire discussion. Our people themselves, you see, politicians are people that don't have principle. They are in the game to win. They will sway their position based on the narrative. And our people have decided to vote on, I mean, they, they set their vote on tribalism. So you won't, it won't be strange for politicians to play to that sentiment. Like something that Joseph Parker understands as well. We saw in 2017 when they came with this so-called indigenous ticket. That was yeah. honor. That was a travel honor too. We know it. Let me tell you something. If nobody honors them, Joseph Parker like breakfast, if Charles Bronx can honors them, Joseph Parker like like someone know the palm of their hand. That's how you honors them, Joseph Parker. If Bronx was alive today, there is no way. That's why he played on the Charlie role. In oh man! But you really keep touching your, your, your Bluetooth on your head. Maybe you know. too off. Wow, my man, what's going on? My man, sorry, we're getting the sewer part and I tell you, so I tell you, blue to go off. Sorry, Chief. I took it off now. Yeah. Go ahead. It will not misbehave again. Yeah, like I was saying, Brooks can't honor them. Charles Bronson can't honor them. Like, I'm not 
Broski understands Joseph Waka and they won't stop. Let me tell you something. Joseph Waka understands that. That's why I told, I put, I made a post the last time that there will be no way they will elevate the debate in Liberian politics. Because Joseph Waka understands if you want to make the, the debate about issue, what is it about who can create jobs? Whether you got that, that uh, uh, leadership ability, that decision making ability, whether you can bring investment to the country, whether you can change the country economic situation around. Joseph Waka knows that would not be a winning argument against a communist. Even when it comes to the vice president, it's a big. Do you think if you're to put Charlie Brunsky and Jeremiah Cohn to talk about policy, you think that that's a debate Jeremiah Cohn would want to have with elected like Charlie Brunsky? So they nope. understand that their ticket is more of a hard ticket to sell. They are comments in the challenge Bronski speaking. Look, there was this guy, May Romney, made a famous winner in politics 2012 election. He said, if you don't have anything to run on, you want to turn your opponent into something people might run from. That's what you see happening. They cannot win a defeat. They cannot make that case against the common ticket. The common ticket will be an easy ticket to sell the Opaka ticket. Exactly. So the last, so the last thing, the last option, is to go with the travel line. Yep. You see, I tell people, the whole native and Congo people think, if I was a Congo man, I think I would embrace this argument. Because historically, the last time I checked, when the Congo people were in control of that country, we were ranked at the highest among the committee of nations. People respected the library everywhere around the world, whether it was on the continent or outside of the continent. And what happened? The first indigenous that ever took power, we have never known peace since. We came from the top to one of the least on the planet. So I think from a political standpoint, if they want to go that line, I think I will embrace that argument if I were the communists, because there is a record of proof. It has been 40 years in Liberia came from one of the top to the least in the army on the continent. So like I said, they won't want to have any substantive argument with a communist, because communist tickets seem to be much better than a Quaka ticket. But just in case, if they want to go down the travel route, this will be it. That politics, you got to embrace anything. You got to be ready for anything and you got to throw punches. So for the communist team, if you're out there, whether they call you a Congo man, take that, take, take that label, bro. You can turn it to your, I mean, you can turn it into a positive. Because like I said, the history and the record are there. The first indigenous that became president, he stole, he killed more people, he raped an election, he chased his opponent out of the country. And I don't think that's what history want to have. So if you want to play that Congo and native thing, I think it will be easier to sell the Congo people argument because when they were there, the country was in a much better position. And you have been 42 years since. We have never known any better. So I will, I will embrace that argument. Like I tell you, see, I mean, Moses, Moses, you cannot dictate how people make an argument in politics, but you can turn it to your own good. Because trust me, politics is so busy. It's a hate game. So I'm not going to take you say, oh, you cannot attack me on travel lines. I want that debate. The question is, how do you put a spin on it? And tell the people in, in terms of making better choices. That that's how I see it. That, 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 make, that, that, that makes sense, bro. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for the team. Yeah, Mr. Kane. Yeah, let, let me let me see something real quick. Please go, go, go. Please go for it. This person, Juma Jala. I like you. I like you as support for SKT for being here all, all the time. But what you just wrote. I'm going to delete it. But the next time you write something like that, I will remove you from SKTV. You will never come to SKTV anymore. The reason why I'm warning you because you've been here all the time. Some of you are some of the people that I consider to have peanut brains, liars. By extension, do that that are called stupid people. Knowing what is lie, knowing what you have nothing to offer, you have nothing to say, you have no counter argument, you don't have nothing, no policy to sell to the person you're supporting. You cannot even defend the person you're supporting. You will go and buy into disrespect. That kind of behavior. It's not acceptable here. For example, we have stopped people here from calling George, George We are stating names on this platform. In as much as we got problem with some of his policy, but certain disrespect is not acceptable here on this on this platform. 
certain thing you can change Joseph Barker all you want. There's certain thing we will not allow you to say about him here. But you come in to call Alexander Comis, Alexander Beatrice Comis. I'm going to repeat it. Maybe you know more about Comis than we do. Maybe you or some of your parents are in the same category with him. We don't know. Maybe all you and your father, your all your people, then maybe you guys are gay. We don't know. But here, that's not what we discuss here. What we discuss here is issue that matter to the Liberian people. The next time you write that kind of nonsense here, we will permanently remove you from SKTV. I'm not really going to miss my word on that. Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think we're getting to the point where in, you know, in as much as you've told me before that we should leave certain people, you know. No, I mean, I mean, I, I, we can leave everybody to spread themselves, but everybody across the line, we have to, we have to let them know. You've been, you've been one of the people that even beyond close, I'll say on the record, have told me, you know, to not black people. Yeah. You know, you've, you've, you've said it over and over. Even the other time we went to the meeting to remove people. You're one of the people that voted for us to bring people back. Me, let me just say on the record. All those fools, I said the man I come back. I voted no. Say who voted with the rest of the people, yes. That I can't you say guys are fools that came back. Because me, fools are not my friends. You play fool, you gotta go. And when you're gone, you are gone. You're not coming back. You come out differently, you play fool, you'll go again. Me, I operate. I don't have I have zero tolerance for stupid people. Me and stupid people will not get too much what it go because I know you will not change, especially when you reach Papa 18. You know, and you up there, and you still a fool, you fool for life. So we're not going to do that. But say who? Yeah, but I mean, I mean, this only show that... Yeah, in that day, I remember. <laughs> it means that you have nothing. So, 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 so if, I mean, if, 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 if you do that here, definitely, you know, we will not, we will not, we will not even warn you anymore. Come and say, this person lied, this person true, that's fine. Come and say that person got nothing to offer to Liberia. That's fine. Come and say it. What, what, what you think will change Liberia or make the case for your person? That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But to come and come put this kind of nonsense here, SKTV is not for that. SKTV is for mature people, responsible people. So not I mean, me. I mean, I agree with Sarah's. I agree with Sarah's argument. I agree with Sarah's argument. Um, it's just that where we are at this point, and yeah, that's a fact. If you want to bring the Congo and what they call debate, I can agree with Cyrus that on the record, Labro were better on the Congo men than the Congo people. Yep, that is just the fact of the matter. Like it or not, you want to do the Congo conversation, you can check the record. It's far beyond proving. It's far beyond proving. Yep. So, Labura was much better on the Congo people than the so-called country people. Yep. As I agree with Cyrus on hundred percent. Ben is calling me. Ben wants to say something. Come okay, here. sure. I want to go, but yeah, Ben, okay. welcome, my brother. Hey, man, what's up? What's up? We are, my man. They quality are getting you, getting you crazy, old, because some of the push that can be seen from you, they crazy. Old. <laughs> I know, I know, my man. Think, forget him, forget him, forget him, forget him. But you know what? We'll get better after of, 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 of October. But um, I think Sarah made a brilliant point. But I have a fuck to that. The problem is the society like you have to decipher some of the intelligent uh, uh, stuff. Sometimes it can be, it can be difficult. If you hear, uh, and I think it was one of the same, it is in the, in the, the same line of what happened to come and answer that other question that the food had asked a stupid way in the running a lot. So, in a society like like you know, even if, if, you, if you see the thing that you can do the other way, once they have a little bit of negative connotation to it, 
if you are tied back to yourself, the society are not ready to go deep down. Into, look how clearly he explained it. Look how nicely he explained it. Things that other person would be willing to sit down to you know, listen to what I was, 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 was saying. But that's a, that's a brilliant point. That's all, that's, that's all I, I, I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, man. Let's check in. So, so I think we should call it a day. Um, yeah, yeah. So let me update um again. Let me see. Let me check if there's anything else because I want to make sure that people can I can we can contribute and we leave them out. So I want to make sure. Okay, yeah, that's the uh hundred dollars and the ten dollars and the thirty dollars. So that those are the contributions uh, so far, the ones that I call. So I want to say uh Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I want to say thank you to everybody for your contribution. We appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to those people who are here to contribute and will continue to contribute. You know, let me say this before I go. Some of you who are tribalists, especially. When it comes to people who come from other countries, something that you may not know that I will tell you today. My dingoes that are Guinean, they are so proud to be from Guinea. They even laugh at my dingo people from Liberia, that you people are from foolish country. Maybe you don't know that. My dingoes that are in Guinea. When we went back to when we went to Guinea doing the as a, as a refugee, they used to call Bonya diet. See, the other one used to say your country that is a sweet country, that is the best country. You say you're born in Liberia, you're gonna die in Liberia. Why are you coming doing our country? Madingo people were discriminated against the Madingo people in Guinea. If you don't know that. As divisive as you are, as backward as your country is. Who told you Guinea people, but Guinea man people won't be won't be Liberian? No. Africa Madingo there, they laugh at us. Say we live, we, we, we have one of the worst countries in the world. They say our people are so 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 stupid. That's how they think about us. Even they were even laughing at us when our people then were taking copper wires, Cambo. Take, taking zinc from their from their houses to go sell it to them in their country. They were laughing at us. Who told you they want to be Liberian? Tropalism is just stupid. It can't help you. There are crimes in, in that place, in Aricos. They can laugh at Liberian people. They don't, they don't want to leave from Arico to be from to be anything. Somebody calling from um, from the UK. I want to go now, but I like to take that call and we'll call it a day. Call up, what is your name? Where are you calling from? I think this is from UK. Yeah, this is Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor, how are you? Fine. Go ahead quickly. I just, I just want to make up point, you know. Can you post more volume your voice? Yeah, uh, you, you are very low. For some reason, every time you call, your voice can be very, very low than the phone. Can you hear me on my class? Yes. Yeah, much better. Thank you. Mr. Point, I have no more. But lying, playing Johnson, to bribing, to elect a call as the vice running place. It's unacceptable for the country. And that's because Frank Johnson, being a military man, understands. The 1970 Geneva Convention that uh, contributes to the question of a war. We capture a hidden precedent and mutilated him and kill it. This is a set of conspiracies involving the U.S. government that the U.S. government was in close communication with Mr. Johnson and Mr. Doe. It's unacceptable to our people, justice must be done. We don't think that what has is ready for peace in Liberia because Frank Johnson 
in, in, in that piece when it comes to crimes committed in Liberia. Now, the important issue that Liberia needs to understand, our country will not move forward because there will be no war tribunal set up in Liberia when what has become precedent and people or families will not have the answers in the court when it comes to uh, WC, which is war crime violations of human rights and all of that. Mr. Johnson needs to face the war tribunal and Liberia the answer. What kind is taking the country backwards? He's not going to run the affairs of the country. He's retired. He can't comprehend properly. Because if he was someone who could comprehend properly, he would have nominated, he would have selected the right nominee for his life to run late. And we are watching uh, uh, the issues in Liberia as they develop. We encourage our people to make the right choice because Liberians and Liberians need to answer our people Thank you so much. Uh, he said Baka has nothing to offer to Liberia. Baka has no vision, and Baka does not um, does not have a good thought process because he doesn't understand things according to him. His name is Albert Taylor. He lives in uh, in the UK. He has been one of the followers of SKTV for a very long time. So Steve, um, I think we we called it a day. It was it was a great show. I, I enjoyed it, and I believe many people enjoy it. I want to say a big thank you to all our supporters and friends and fans, you know, that continue to make SKTV for what it is. We appreciate you. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Kane. I'll leave it with you. Folks, thank you. See you on Thursday. So we'll be here on Thursday. Uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, I know this song here. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Love
Oh, oh, oh.